walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes. Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into the whole basics of vectors, what they are, and how we define them. Let's first start off with what vectors are. Vectors essentially have just two traits. They have magnitude and they have direction. With magnitude, we're talking about size. And oftentimes when we use vectors to represent things like, say, speed or distance, we're talking about how much distance, how much velocity. With direction, it's all about which way we're going. So if you're going to have a rate of, say, 400 knots, we want to know in what direction you are going 400 knots. Here's an example of a vector that's been mapped. You'll notice that two coordinates are given, one for the tail end and one for the arrowhead. Now a vector, again, as you can see, it has a certain direction. It's pointing in this manner. And the way you can relate it to lines and such is you can think of it as a certain slope. All vectors have a certain slope, and that slope can never be altered. You can move a vector wherever you like. Like, for example, it can move, uh, it can move upward, or you can move it to the right, but no matter what, you don't want to change the direction in which it's pointing. In other words, you want to keep the slope always the same, so we don't rotate it. And also, this vector is unique in that it has this size, so you're not going to shrink it or lengthen it either. Typically, vectors are drawn with its tail lying at the origin, the way you see it here. This is referred to as a position vector. Position vectors are written similarly to points. Since the tail end is at the origin, what we do is we simply refer to the arrowhead here and its location. So if its location, as you can see, is at negative 2, 4, we would write negative 2, 4 like a point, but then use arrows to denote that it's a vector. Or what will happen is a lot of times it'll be written in terms of i and j, where i would tell you basically how far horizontally and J would tell you how far vertically the arrowhead is. So here's where our vector was originally. If we wanted to rewrite this as a position vector where the tail end is located at the origin, all we would have to do is just simply go head to tail. That's the coordinates of the arrowhead. So we're going to take these numbers and then subtract these numbers here. So that's negative 5 minus negative 3. And then it's 3 minus negative 1. That gives us negative 2 and 4. So the way we would write this is this. We would write negative 2i plus 4j. Or we would just simply write negative 2 comma 4 bracketed by arrows. It should be noted that instead of head and tail, a lot of books and texts will simply use terminal point and initial point to denote these two values. So the arrowhead would be the terminal point, and then the tail would be the initial point because that's where you started from, and that's where you finished. Whether it's head or tail, terminal or initial, we still do the same thing. Okay, so that addresses direction. So now, what about magnitude? Let's say we have these two particular vectors, a different u this time, and a vector v. Here they are in terms of i and j. How would you determine the magnitude or how long this particular vector is? Now the way it'll be written is it'll ask for the length of a vector, but more often than not using symbols you'll encounter this kind of statement, determine the magnitude of u, where you see like these bars surrounding the vector. The way we would do that would be a variation of the Pythagorean theorem. You see, if you were using the Pythagorean theorem, you would draw a triangle. So this will be your horizontal and your vertical. Lengths negative 3 and 2. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, you would get the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle, which also happens to be the magnitude of that vector. A lot of books would prefer to stick to formula on this, and the way they would do it is they would take the horizontal component and square it, the vertical component and square it, and then add those together, followed by square rooting that sum. So that's negative 3 squared plus 2 squared, and then square rooted. So again, it's like the Pythagorean theorem. Another way you can address magnitude is by using a scalar. A scalar is 
In a sense, it's a multiplier. You can think of it as a coefficient for an ordinary variable. So if you're asked to determine, say, 3v, you are, in a sense, just tripling all the values of vector v. So right here are your components of vector v. If you triple them, that's this. And then if you take that 3 and just simply distribute to both values there, you get 9i plus 18j. Or as stated before, you can write it as 9 comma 18 surrounded by carrots or arrows there. Visually, it means exactly what you think it means. If you have, say, a vector v and you triple it, then it's just three of those. But the result would be just simply one long vector like this instead of three little vectors here that are connected head to tail. Many times, you'll find that people want to disregard magnitude. So the way you do that is you would determine the unit vector. So that way you can just simply focus on direction. A unit vector is just simply a vector with length 1. So if you take all your vectors, essentially, and reduce them down so it's like only that long, or this one's only this long, since it's all part of a circle of a radius 1, all you can think about then is which way it's going, kind of like the way you'd imagine a compass. Let's say that we wanted to find the unit vector for vector v. It'll state something like this. Determine the unit vector that has the same direction as v. Well, you're going to need to know what the components are for v. Again, there it is. And you can also just see visually that's where the arrowhead is pointing at. It's at 3, 6. So the way you would do that is you would take those components for vector v and you would divide it by its magnitude. So here it is in formula. That's the vector divided by its magnitude. So what that is is 3i plus 6j divided by, remember, we use Pythagorean theorem for this, or just square each of these. This gives you the square root of 45, or in other words, 3 root 5. So what happens is you'll take 3 root 5 and then just divide it into 3 and into 6. Whatever you get here, that'll be your new i component or horizontal component. This will be a vertical component. Just go ahead and reduce this. And then you would rationalize by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 5. And that's what we get. Now this answer doesn't really look aesthetically pretty, but uh, a lot of times you'll see that people will write this in decimal form to kind of give an idea of just exactly how much of 1 that it stretches horizontally and vertically. Remember, none of these values are going to be bigger than 1 because the magnitude itself has been divided into the whole thing, thus shrinking it down so that its entire length is 1. Okay, let's switch back to direction again. Let's say you were asked to determine negative v. Well, as you would guess, if this is v and these are the components, then you would just simply change the signs for the horizontal and vertical part. So that would be negative 3i minus 6j. However, I do want to note what it looks like. The arrowhead and the tail basically switch. So what will happen is this will just simply be the tail and that'll be the arrowhead. Now before you go ahead and do that on a picture, if your professor or teacher asks you to draw it out, you wouldn't leave it like that. You must keep in mind that a position vector has the tail at the origin. So this would be negative 3i minus 6j, or the vector negative v. What about adding and subtracting vectors? If you were asked to determine u plus v, it is what you think it is. We would just simply take the two horizontal components and add them together, then the vertical components and add those together. So you would write it like this, and then you would treat this the way you would do an ordinary algebra problem. Just collect your like terms. So that would be your solution. By the way, the i's go away, so that would be 0i. And a lot of times people will write that in, 0i, then plus 8j, just to kind of remind themselves that the horizontal part is 0. You might know that the i and the j look very similar in the way you write them. So to prevent those kind of mistakes of making your j's look like i's, a lot of times people will write the 0 part first. You should also understand how this looks visually. I mean, exactly how would it look like? I mean, of course, you can draw 8j. It's just an arrow pointing up at 8. 
But there's a way to do it without doing all the arithmetic, which is kind of nice if you're given numbers that are rather unfriendly. What you would do is you would rearrange these vectors, connecting them head to tail. This is vector u. Remember that vectors can be moved around as long as you don't rotate them or shrink them or expand them. So if we translate this vector here so that it's attached at the end of vector u, then it'll look like this. So this is u, and this is u added on to v, and then the result would be where you started from from vector u and where you finished with vector v. So this particular vector itself is u plus v. And by the way, note where the arrowhead is. It's at 0, 8, which means that this vector is just 8j. And if you were subtracting, like say u minus v, pretty much the same thing, but in reverse, we would minus the two groups. You'll note that I placed parentheses here to group the two, comp two groups of components. Here, when you minus them, that essentially just means that these signs will switch, just like what we had before with negative v. So that becomes this, which when you collect terms gives you this. That means the resulting vector is going to have the arrowhead at negative 6 minus 4j. Here's negative v. Now if you move negative v so that its tail continues on where the arrowhead of u left off, you can see where the result is. So that's the initial. This is the terminating point. And note, that would be the resulting vector. So this is u minus v. With scalars, it's pretty much the same idea. So if you were asked to determine, say, 2u minus 4v, and this is without drawing, then we determine 2u, then negative 4v, and then we put them together. Or just figure out 4v and then do this, where you just simply minus the groups. Either way gives you this, which becomes this. So in a sense, you can treat this the way you would any algebraic expression. Last but not least, let's do something like this. Let's say you're given the magnitude of a certain vector, and you're given an angle at which it is pointing at. Write this vector in terms of i and j. Well, the way you would do this is the way you would convert polar coordinates, in that you would convert them to rectangular by using these particular formulas. So the equivalent would be that the r radius would simply match your magnitude. Here's a picture, by the way. So for the x value, it's going to be 10 times a cosine of 330, and then the answer, i, where r simply is just the magnitude. Same thing for the y value, only it's 10 sine 330. Evaluate those, and then get your answer. If you're doing this visually, you would look at it like this. You would construct a triangle out of this. This is your reference angle. And then you can just simply do it in that fashion. If you're adept at 30, 60, 90 triangles, you would know that this smaller side here is half of 10. And the medium side here is just simply that smaller side times root 3. So that would be the quick way of determining the horizontal and vertical values.